Today's video is sponsored by Native. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and today is a really exciting video because I am making over a subscriber space virtually. I am really excited about this video because I did a series similar to this a couple years ago and it really gives me the opportunity to connect with so many of you, even if you live outside of Toronto. wild to me when I actually think about how so many of you are watching from around the world. Being able to make over your spaces would be a dream, but just actually not physically possible for one human like myself. As a reminder, all of the call outs for makeovers, both virtually and based in Toronto, are always on my Instagram stories and on my website. If there's nothing posted on the website, it means we're not looking for any spaces to make over at this time. But keep checking because we post call outs pretty regularly. So I received so many submissions for this virtual makeover and I decided to select Jen. Jen is just such a happy, radiant, joyous person, but she's also been a nomad for many years and recently purchased a home during the pandemic, her first home. So I'm really excited to make this space feel like hers, comfy, cozy, warm, and inviting. Let's hop on a call with Jen to get to know her, her story, and what she's looking for in this design process. How are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm good, it's so nice to meet you. Really excited to dive into your space. I have all your info here. I love that you put it on Mill and Oat. It makes my life so much easier. <laughs> but I would love for you to just tell me like a little bit about your story, how you ended up in the apartment you're in now. Just tell me about yourself. I live in San Diego, California, but I just moved back here three years ago. Before moving back, I was a digital nomad for four years. Cool. So I was traveling the world, eventually made my way back down to San Diego. I bought my first condo and I bought it sight unseen because it was during the pandemic. Wow. I had been a nomad. I, I sold all my things when I first left San Diego. So I moved in here with a box and then I tried to be prepared and I ordered my bed before I moved in. But you know, with the back orders and everything, it took another three to six months before I actually got it. The couch that's in there is definitely temporary. It's, it's not meant to be my forever couch. I gave myself a housewarming gift. I have like this waterfall anthropology. I love it. Yeah, oh my gosh, that was my splurge. It's so, so beautiful. <laughs> I love it so much. And then I got um, a table from World Market. I love the brass, goldy accents and everything. And I love rounded corners and everything. So in my inspiration, I really pulled out a lot of curvy couches and I love textures. So I love the boot clay. I finally decided on articles, boot clay, curved couch, but now yeah. it's on a waiting list. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> I love that sofa. I feel like I play Ring Around the Rosie with my living room okay. because I keep moving the couch around because where the window is, there's a air conditioner that goes through the wall and Got it sticks it. out about a foot. In the summer, I can't block it. So that's yeah. why the couch is where it is now. But previously I had it over there. And then your little dining nook is so cute. Is that working functionally for you? It does. I think, yeah, I think that might be the best I can do. It's that cabinet behind, I store things in there, so. This is great. I feel like I have an understanding of the layout. I feel like an entryway, also some kind of separation between the front door and the living space could be helpful. Cause right now you like walk in literally to the living room. I can understand why this would be a bit of a challenge, but I already have some ideas just looking at it. So I'm excited. <laughs> walk me through your style. I feel like it's very boho eclectic, colorful. Yeah, I think of it as a boho luxe. I kind of like laid back, but accents of like refinement. The info images you pulled are all so cohesive and I just feel like you have a really clear vision. You just need help pulling it all together. So I'm really excited that you trust me to do that for you. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Alexandra. Have a great day. You too. Now that it's spring, I just wanna refresh everything in my home, including my bath and body products. You guys know I love Native. I have used their products and loved them for years. I use their deodorant every single day, and I've also been using their body wash. I love the Native body wash because it leaves my skin feeling hydrated and soft, and it also froths up into a really luxurious lather. Of course, the body washes are made from naturally derived ingredients. They are cruelty-free and they're also vegan. The scents are long-lasting, so I find that I smell fresher for longer. The one I am so excited about is grapefruit and bergamot. It just smells like 
spring and summer. If you're looking for something a little more sophisticated, something that smells like the outdoors, sea salt and cedar literally smells like a beautiful forest, but again, clean and fresh. And then Noah has been using the citrus and herbal musk scent for maybe about a year. This is his scent of choice and he loves it. It smells very sophisticated, but also again, really clean and fresh. Use my link and code GATOR9 to get 20% off your first native purchase. I will link everything in the description box below. This offer is available site-wide, but only for a limited amount of time. So stock up on all your spring scents. Happy shopping. So a couple things I learned about this space. Jen's space is kind of a challenging layout. First of all, when you walk through the door, it's all open. So her entryway is right there. She has this fireplace jutting out on an angle. And whenever there's a fireplace placed like this in a home, it throws everything off because it's like, okay, do you put the sofa on an angle in front of the fireplace? But then it's weird because it's awkwardly off to the side. Where do you put the TV? She has this beautiful waterfall table from Anthropology and her dining table, which is marble and has kind of a tulip shape to it. And she's in love with these pieces and we are definitely gonna work those into the design, but everything else can be returned to her friends. They're really just like temporary pieces. Jen's inspo is also what drew me to her. Her inspo is so fun and it's very clear to me what she's looking for. She has dubbed her style boho luxe, which I think is so great. Lots of velvet, lots of really bright and bold colors, but these really kind of sophisticated grown up pieces thrown in like her waterfall table. It's like refined boho, casual, but also sophisticated at the same time. Jen's mood board is a great example of someone who knows their style, but just needs help like pulling it all together and sourcing products that she can purchase and make over this space herself. So I've taken some time to plan Jen's space. I have a solid vision and we're gonna start in the living room. The thing I really focused on in the living room was the furniture configuration. I'm actually kind of switching everything around. On this wall, we are making this kind of a focal point and I wanna deck it out in this beautiful floral wallpaper. I picked this wallpaper because it's bold, it's colorful, and I think it's gonna look really beautiful against that back wall. I love this oak medium unit from Article and I think this will make a great media console for her. I have another plan for the waterfall anthropology table that she currently has her TV sitting on but I think she needs a proper console to hide wires. Look at that against the wallpaper. It's so beautiful. It has curves on the side and it's very boho. I'm gonna suggest she puts the TV on the wall. I always love mounting a television on the wall. I think it looks cleaner and then she can hide all the cords in the media unit underneath. Originally, I thought we could keep the rug Jen already has, but it's not big enough for the space. And I probably sound like a broken record to those of you who watch these videos regularly, but when you have a rug that's too small, it makes your space feel smaller than it actually is. So I have pulled this knotted wool rug for Jen. It's neutral, but it has lots of texture in it and it is a larger size. So it's gonna span most of the living room. This sofa, Jen had said that she really wanted to purchase from Article. It's boucle and it's curved. And I think it's actually so perfect for this space because not only is it an interesting shape, but it helps kind of connect the fireplace to the living room. I definitely want her to face the sofa towards the television. Placing the sofa here makes the fireplace feel like it's part of the living room rather than like an awkward feature off to the side. We're embracing the fireplace, not turning our backs to it. I love this armchair. It's pulling the colors from the wallpaper. It's bold, but it's like sophisticated and muted. It has those curves to it. And I'm suggesting Jen puts this off to the side facing that fireplace. Because Jen needs lots of light, I found this really gorgeous floor light. We are mixing and matching wood tones here to keep it feeling boho. And this is gonna go in the corner behind the chair. This coffee table was actually in an inspo photo that Jen pinned. I am obsessed with it. I feel like it really encapsulates her whole style. And this is definitely going in the living room uh, in front of the sofa. So on the call, Jen actually mentioned to me that she was testing out colorful curtains. And I am actually 
actually gonna suggest that she just sticks to white. And the reason is because we're going so colorful with the furniture and the wallpaper and soon the paint, keeping the accessories bright and airy kind of grounds the whole space and doesn't make it feel too cluttered. But I'm adding this really beautiful curtain rod. Again, very boho, very luxe with the gold and the marble, but then keeping the accessories and the textiles a little bit simpler. It's going to allow the bright and bold furniture and wall coverings to really pop. For the cushions, I'm pulling in colors from the rest of the living room. We're going with a pink cushion, a textured white cushion, playing with shapes, but keeping things cozy and cohesive. So now we're moving on to this fireplace. And I feel like so many people get overwhelmed when they are kind of stuck with a fireplace covered in outdated tile like Jen's. So I am actually going to suggest that she covers this in peel and stick tile. The tile on her fireplace is a really great candidate for peel and stick tile because it, it's very smooth. So peel and stick tile can go over top. This peel and stick tile is from Quadro Style and it comes in sheets. So she can just cover the tile seamlessly with a new pattern. Above the fireplace, I sourced this print that makes me so happy. It's of this neon pink sheet. It's such an unexpected print, but pulled into the mood board and against all the other colors, it really works. And I think the key here when you're creating an eclectic, bold space is pulling out colors and picking different tones of them. We got a lot of pinks going on, but we don't have neon pink. So this is a hit of neon pink. I'm gonna be bringing in yellow to the entryway. So it'll all kind of tie in together. I saw this piece on anthropology and I just knew it had to go into Jen's space. It's so quirky, but again, like really sophisticated. It's this beautiful side table with a peacock base. I thought this would be a great place for her to set up a little bar. It could be an extra surface when she is hosting for snacks and drinks. It's just such a beautiful, bold statement piece. So moving on to the entryway. The first thing I'm going to suggest Jen does is paint this entire wall, this beautiful backdrop paint color called Skywalker. We're using paint here to define the entryway from the rest of the space because it is open concept. I want Jen to keep the console exactly where she had it before, but now instead of being a place for her TV, it is going to be where she puts all of her entryway necessities. Under the console table, I'm gonna suggest a couple of baskets. These are really tall and this can be where Jen puts extra shoes, accessories, anything she needs to kind of grab and go as she's running out the door. Sitting on top of the console table, this wavy mirror in this green. Again, we're pulling in different tones of colors, but they all work together. Adding in this lamp on the right side of the console table to give her uh, some light on this side of the room. Simple, but uh, I love the shape of it. To the left of the console table, I'm gonna suggest Jen hangs these hooks. I found them on Amazon. And what I really like about them is that they have these leather loops so she can hug a scarf through, but then she can also hang her bags on them as well. Jen lives in California, so she lives in a warm climate and that really works in my favor for this open entryway because she doesn't need a ton of storage for like parkas and scarves and all the things we need here in Canada. I'm so jealous. At the front of the entryway, she has these outdated tiles on the floor. So I am suggesting she use these wall pop floor tiles instead. We recently used these in a makeover and they are such good quality, so good for an entryway. Really easy, cost-effective way for her to update this little section of her entryway. It's like the first thing she sees when she walks in. A couple final accessories to finish off this entryway, this cute doormat, and this bold and beautiful yellow runner, which ties in so nicely with that sheep art print above the fireplace. Because the dining nook is yet another kind of zone in this open floor plan, I wanted to carry that Skywalker paint color into the dining room, again, to make it feel like a little separate space. To kind of frame this space really nicely, I am suggesting Jen hangs this pendant from Target. I've had my eye on this light. This rattan pendant really frames this dining room, makes it look more intentional. I feel like putting a pendant above a dining table is always just kind of a finishing touch to pulling a dining room space together. And we're obviously gonna keep Jen's dining table. It's so beautiful and complements the space so well. Doing a little color blocking with these beautiful dining chairs from Article. I love the dark blue velvet against the light blue walls. Again, we have so many blue accents throughout this space, but I'm adding in yet another tone of blue to make it feel really eclectic and bohemian. This console table Jen already had, I'm keeping it here. It works really well for extra dining storage. And then I'm placing this mirror above the console table. This is from Target. 
another really inexpensive find. Jen could always switch up the placement of the sheet print above the fireplace with this mirror and then hang the sheet print in the dining space if that's what she prefers. I'm gonna suggest that Jen actually takes the curtains off of these sliding doors. I think she needs to bring the light in and I feel like they're kind of making this dining nook feel more closed in and kind of claustrophobic than it needs to be. So I'm gonna suggest she takes the curtains away and lets the light in. Take the curtains away and let the light in. You can quote me on that. <laughs> yeah, like Amanda's like, second verse to you can see my light. Take the curtains down and let the light in. <laughs> you know? So now it's time to reveal the space to Jen and you guys get to see this whole space come together. And I can't wait to see what Jen thinks. Let's hop on a call with her. Hi, Jen. Hi. I'm so, so, so excited to reveal your space to you. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I've been like anticipating this, so can't wait. You have such a fun style, so this was really fun to do. So I'm gonna show you the first after. I love it, oh my gosh. The pop of the wall, that's so nice. I love the neon sheet, it's so cute. <laughs> the mirror reflects the wallpaper behind it and the colors. Yeah. Oh, you did such a fantastic job. Thank you so much. It's exactly what I was looking for, something cohesive, and I love the pops of colors and all the pieces you picked. I have one last surprise for you that I'm so excited to tell you about. To help get you started, Article is actually going to gift you the sofa. So it's the curved sofa <laughs> that um, you had mentioned that I put into the design. I think it looks amazing. So hopefully that will help get you motivated and like ready to actually implement this design. Oh my God, thank you so much. It's been on my wish list for so long. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. I think it's just gonna be just such a great piece to add to your growing collection. Oh, what a fantastic surprise. Oh my gosh, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. I am so glad you love the design. You were honestly such a joy to work with. Like, you're so enthusiastic and your style was so fun. I'm so inspired and I, oh my God, I'm so excited to get started. Thank you so much, Alexandra. A little self-promotion here. I actually have virtual makeover packages that I sell on my website. All the details and links will be down below. As always, I will see you guys next time. Bye.